On September 26 of this year I responded to an ad on Kijiji about a house for rent, the guy I talked to convinced me on the phone that the place I wanted to rent was available but tenants were in there and I ended up sending him $1,300 by email transfer, then when I realized that I was scammed the next day he wouldn't give my money back. I ended up calling the RCMP about it and told them what happened, they took my name and number and I never heard back from them ever again and the Airdrie BMO told me it was my own fault for sending the money to someone I didn't know, buyers beware. The scammer then did end up sending my $1,300 back to me on October 13th and still posted random houses on Kijiji and making $1,500 off of each person that sent him money, I ended up transferring $1,000 from my Simply account where I received the $1,300 and sent it to my BMO account to pay bills that I have connected to my BMO account. I find out a few days later that my BMO account was frozen and that I needed a new card because my account apparently received bad money and the bank first said it was compromised from a $1,750 email transfer I sent on October 1st, which wasn't the case because I sent $1,750 every month for almost a year on the 1st to my landlords for rent. My main branch then got me to fill out paperwork for it to send it to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre in Ottawa, which turned out to be ok the next day, which is obvious since I sent $1,750 every month, and the bank never got me to do this at first when I reported I was scammed $1,300 in the first place. So I ended up getting the new card and went on my way, then my account was ok for a day or two until all of a sudden it was frozen again. I went into the Airdrie BMO yet again and they couldn't figure out why it was frozen, so after numerous times of me going back and forth to the branch and calling telephone banking, everyone was giving me different answers and no one couldn't give me a valid reason why this was happening. This ended up being frozen for a week after me going into the Airdrie BMO every day that week and me calling telephone banking every day that week with 45 minute to 1 hour wait times on the phone to even speak to someone, this ended up with the teller finally going to the back room and speaking to a fraud department and she literally had to yell at them to unfreeze my account since there was no reason to have it frozen. My account then got unfrozen and she issued me yet another new bank card and I was on my way, at this point I was able to take money out for a U-Haul since I was in the process of moving from Airdrie to Calgary. I was thinking this was the end of it but nope dot 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 the next day $1000 in my BMO account ended up being on hold, and again days of me contacting telephone banking, with horrendous wait times, and me going back to the Airdrie branch and getting told to go to my main branch, again getting different answers, I also ended up going into the branch by my new house and no one at any of the branches or on the phone can give me real answers. All they say is to stick to one branch otherwise they are starting over on my account even though telephone banking told me I can visit any branch. At this point is when the Airdrie branch found out the $1000 I transferred from my Simply account was bad money, and I was being accused of fraud, even though I was the receiver of the money, and my Simply account was fine. So days go by of dealing with this matter via phone and constantly going into the Airdrie branch and them having to call different departments until one day the teller at the Airdrie branch that yelled at them prior to this sat me down in an office while she had the fraud department on the phone. They listened to my story and then wanted proof from me that this was a scam then they will unfreeze the $1000 for me. During all this time not once did simply, where I received the money in the first place, ever freeze my account or anything. It was based on it being sent from one account to the other. So finally on October 30th I brought in the emails where I was in contact with this guy, not many, just where I responded to his ad and him saying to call him, and from the business where he got the ad from, Power Properties, I even reached out to them and they said they get fished all the time but never had anyone collect money and they made a file with the Calgary police. I even brought my emails of the conversation with them into the bank and on Thursday November 1st the bank, two days after I gave my proof to them, finally figured out where to send it to and then on Friday November 2nd is when all day long telephone banking was telling me to visit a branch to get it unfroze. 
So on November 2nd I visited the branch by my new house again and they had no notes about unfreezing my money, even though the night before the person on the phone told me to do this, so then I called back at telephone banking again after visiting the branch at 10 a.m. and after another long waiting period the person on the phone told me there is a note on my account saying to visit the branch where the proof was sent in. So again I went back to the Airdrie branch and the teller that sent the email of my proof to the fraud department wasn't in until 2 p.m. and this is at 11 a.m. They did release $100 for me to go on since the money was in my account but only on hold, and they told me that the teller will call me after 2 p.m. when she reviews her emails to see what's happening. So 5 p.m. on November 2nd I missed a call from her but she left me a voicemail saying she had to take my $1,000 because the Interact Fraud Department is claiming that my proof wasn't good enough and wanted conversations of it. I only had that conversation since the rest of the conversation with the scammer was by phone, so they claim they reversed the $1,000 back which I figured would go back to my Simply account which it didn't so it must have went back to the scammer. All this fighting and in the end when I called telephone banking about this since the branch was now closed they were claiming I wasn't a victim of fraud and saying the bank took the money, but didn't admit they reversed it, so after that I closed my Simply account since that's where it all stemmed from and I will be closing my BMO account after it gets out of minus $100 from the $100 that the bank teller gave me. The scammer still posts random house ads on Kijiji and still isn't caught and me being the receiver, and victim, I had to go all through this and in the end it was all for nothing, the $1000 that was originally on hold was taken from my EI that was deposited on October 23rd. I guess they must think since I am on EI that I am the one that was doing the scam. No one ever had the same story and they all had to start over and the Airdrie branch fought to the end to help me out and I thank them for it but the other branches didn't seem to care and in the end the Interact and Circa fraud departments don't care and I can still never get a number to even reach the Interact or Circa fraud department because no one is willing to give it. This all happened around the same time when an Oshawa, Ontario woman went to use her Scotiabank debit card to make a purchase at a dollar store in late September, she found out her account was frozen, Scotiabank had shut it down. Thieves had stolen more than $3,000 from one of her accounts and had charged tens of thousands of dollars to multiple credit cards, including the Scotiabank Visa card. What she did not know that day was that Scotiabank had access to information about possible fraud in her financial profile weeks earlier, key information she said they didn't relay. Scotiabank admitted it became aware six weeks earlier that there were changes to her account, she learned in a telephone conversation with a bank manager what the bank knew and when. After Global News got involved, Scotiabank gave back the money. Interact and Circa monitor all transfers between every Canadian bank, so it doesn't surprise me if they also did this to her.